Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this. So now we're going to get started on today's show. We've got a lot of things going on here, starting with my version of shrimp scampi. Now, shrimp scampi, I've had so many, over the years, so many different ways. Some people put prosciutto in it. I've even had it with chopped meat in it. I've, I went all around the world and had shrimp scampi, the typical pizza reel servitia, the old um, stainless steel boat, little white wine, garlic. So what do we know about sc shrimp scampi is that there's a lot of alterations, but you always have to keep the garlic butter and the white wine, right? Those are the the three things to put in there. So I'm going to give you my version. At the same time, I'm going to be working with a risotto dish as well that's going to be going with this. So we got a lot of things going on with one dish. So we got the, the shrimp scampi, the risotto, and then we got these microgreens I'll talk to you a little bit about later. Pretty creative, wacky stuff out there. So to get started, we got ourselves a hot pan. Um, let's start with this. So we're going to take a little bit of olive oil. Now, I like doing half olive oil and half butter for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is because of the burning point. It'll help raise it to another level so it won't burn as quickly. But you can't mistake in the flavor for the butter, folks. Uh, you need it, especially with scampi, okay? But put the oil in there. That way, as soon as you put the butter in the pan, you're not going to get, like, smoke and everybody's going to start. Everybody always smells the burning stuff that doesn't taste good first. What are you burning in there, right? People might have heard that a few times. All right, now this is a simple dish, but I like to go slow with it. And one of the key ingredients to my scampi is scal um, shallots. And shallots, you can't beat it. You can't beat the flavor of shallots. So these are minced shallots. We're going to put them in there. And, of course, we got our garlic, fresh garlic, right? I didn't hear garlic powder, right? No dried uh, spices with this dish at all. So we're going to return this to the fire, not too hot, just enough to keep us honest. All right, now you've gotten to the point now where um, you could start to smell the onions, you could, the shallots rather, you could start to smell the garlic. Now what you want to do is throw in some fresh parsley. Now, a lot of people think that fresh parsley is only a, an additive uh, herb that you throw in at, at the very end to garnish plates. but don't mistake in that, I'm telling you right now, you can get incredible flavor out of this. Now, what I like to do at this point, since we're going slow, is take our shrimps and put them in there. Make sure you get them all. And make sure you cover the shrimps with the garlic and the shallots. Now, I'm going to return this to the fire in a very low flame. I want these shrimps to cook at a very slow pace. If they cook at a slow pace, they're not going to be as rubbery. It'll be nice and tender. You know, just the way you cook a steak. You don't, you don't sear a steak in uh, high temperature and then throw some wine in there and let it cook rapidly. You're going to restrict the, the muscle uh, in the meat, and it's going to be very tough. You cook a steak very low, gradual heat for an hour, you know, very slow temperature, basting the top of it with oil. That's how you get the great flavor of a steak. That's how you get... Uh, good flavor of seafood, too. Need a little taste of the garden. Throw a little bit of red pepper in there. It's going to give it color. And I wouldn't use green pepper because it's got a different flavor. Red pepper is a little sweet. It'll add to the dish. It'll add to the color, and it'll add to the flavor. Now, while we're doing this, we're going to take a little break, and we're going to jump over to our breadcrumbs. We're going to hop over here to a, a hot pan, take some breadcrumbs. Now, I don't know about your breadcrumbs in your kitchen, but over here, they're never seasoned. So we have to season them. We got a little cracked black pepper. A little sea salt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to toast these breadcrumbs on the fire. You got to be careful. The stuff burns quick. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise the heat. I'm going to... Toast these breadcrumbs. I'm going to leave them off to the side. Instead of taking this and putting it in there and having it cook in the oven, I'm not going to do that. So what we're going to do, see these shrimps? See how they're starting to turn nice and nice? Wow. Ooh. I'm going to look at this. Now, these breadcrumbs are going to start to turn brown really quickly. Like I said, don't let them burn. Two things that cook really quick in the pan. Nuts, any type of nuts, and any type of breadcrumbs like I'm doing now. I'm toasting the breadcrumbs because you don't want that raw bread flavor. You want a nice crispy texture. 
Don't add any oil, anything like that. So let that continue to go for a little while. We're going to take lemons. What I like to do is put the lemons just like that. You don't have to worry about pits, anything like that. All the liquid will start to flip out. Now, see the breadcrumbs? You can start to see it. They're getting nice and toasted. I don't add any butter. So the only thing is salt, pepper. And I do this because I want to just lightly sprinkle the breadcrumbs over the top when it's finished. OK, I think we're ready to go. Now, if you were to take these breadcrumbs, I wish you could hear this, but they're nice and crispy now. They're toasted. They got a great, nice color around them, nice and brown. I'm going to take those breadcrumbs. I'm going to leave them off the side, off the flame. We're going to take these shrimps, put them off to the side, and we're going to get started with our risotto dish that I talked about. Now, we're just going to kind of leave this sitting and just absorbing the flavors. We're not in a rush here, right? So we can forget about this a little bit. We're going to take a little bit of white wine. And we're just going to let it at a very slow temperature. Now, going back to our risotto. A risotto gets cipollinis, these flat little onions. It looks like you took an onion just went, and then you got it. Very good flavor, but the key to the cipollini is inside the flavor. It's not the outside. So unless you're taking this cipollini and you're roasting it in the oven, 350 degrees with a lot of olive oil, salt, pepper, you're not going to get the flavor that you should sauteing it. So what you have to do is cut the, the cipollini and quarter it. Don't worry. It'll, it'll kind of un unravel itself and everything else down the road. See how nice and brown that got? You got to be careful because even if it sits in a hot pan, it's still, still going to continue to get brown. But look how much more brown that got than before. All right, now put a little bit of olive oil in here. And put a little bit of butter. Just because we have it. If I had duck fat, lard, bacon fat, uh, goose fat, Anything would have been really good for, for a risotto. You get that Gascon country kind of, kind of flavor. Now look in here. Let's put another cipollini in there. Already you can start to see the, some of the cipollinis turning brown. We're going we're to return that back there. Um, it's a whole incredible process with risotto, and I go a little bit at a time because a lot of people take risotto, they throw it in a pan, water, and they forget about it like it's sushi rice. That's really not the way to do it. To get the flavor, the true flavor of the risotto, you need to cook the risotto first. I only have a little bit of a cup like that. It'll yield three times as much, and I'll probably put four times liquid in here before it's done. Let that return back to the fire. I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff here. Now, risotto uh, is a good dish if it's cooked right. If it's not, it tastes like starchy mashed potatoes. So, you know, the, the key with cooking your risotto is you want to retain a little bit of an al dente crunch to it. Because if you don't, we're just, we're not in a good place. All right, now we got our risotto. Look at the brown. We're getting brown on this risotto. It's exactly what we wanted. Really, it's exactly like we wanted. Uh, that's how you cook risotto. Now, you remember I talked about the cipollini kind of unraveling itself? And it has. See it? Now we're getting some flavor in here. We're not going to stop now. We're going to take some parsley, put that in there. It's going to give it color. It's going to give it substance. It's going to give it flavor. We're going to take a garlic. What have I always said on past shows? Take your garlic and smash it down with a knife carefully. And you got yourself some smashed garlic. We're going to throw the smashed garlic flavor and all right in there. That's going to take it to another level. Now, you really start to see this, this risotto turning brown, right? I'm going to add a little cracked black pepper. I'm going to add a little crushed red pepper. Looking good. Now we're going to add a little bit of almonds. Be careful because I told you before, nuts burn quickly. And we're just going to leave that off the fire a little bit. We're going to take these shrimps. Now, you got shrimps in here, shrimps, scampi, which is going to go with it. I just want to show you real quick how to peel a shrimp. Usually cut down the center. These are, have already been done by the food stylist. And I was like, no, 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 i got to show these people how to do it. Cut it down here like that. 
There's a black vein in there. You want to discard it. Take it. It usually pulls out this way. Pull it. And then you can easily remove this shell all at once and the tail like that. So what you get is a deshell shrimp. These are 2126, which means there's between 21 and 26 pieces of shrimp in a pound. If it was U10s or U12s, means there's 10 and under to a pound of shrimp. That's how you could tell. So what I'm going to do is just take three. They've been deveined already. They haven't been deshelled. They're deshelled now. Wow, that result is really smelling nice. That's what I'm talking about. If you take your time with cooking, stuff just gets to a whole nother level. Okay. Take our shrimps. We got some added shrimps here. Got our sanitized rag. A little bleach solution. I want any cross contamination. And we're going to return this to the fire. Let me wash my hands. Okay, we're going to return this to the fire. Now you see the result those brown, right? We get that back up to the temperature. Chicken stock. You hear that? That's what you, that's what you want to hear. You see that? That's what you want to see. That's cooking risotto. Don't let the competition try to trick you into doing it any way else. Now, cranberries. Sweet flavor. Go great with risotto. Helps cut through the, the starch, that tartness. Bam, right through the, right through the uh, starch there. I'm going to throw some, some of that in there. A couple of more nuts. So I'm feeling a little nutty today. We got our cracked crushed red pepper we put in there. Go back to our shrimp. Remember I told you about this lemon? See how I push it down? There's like nothing there. The pits are still there. Oh, look at that. You don't need to mess around there with that. Just do it this way, folks. You're going to be fine. We're going to leave. And as you can see, our shrimps now, let me move this so you can get a better, better view here. Our shrimp juice is getting real thick. And that's what we want. We want condensed flavor concentrated flavor in with this dish, slow cook, and we got our breadcrumbs to go on top. We got our risotto. We put our risotto back. A couple of last things that we need to add in here, which I will in just a moment. First, we're going to take our mustard, Dijon mustard, sharp, you know, to the point. High vinegar, uh, very smooth texture, no seeds in there. Right here, my secret ingredient. People don't know what it is. It's not too spicy for them. So don't tell anybody, right? Perfect. Now, what we got here is a little bit of goat cheese. We don't add that to the very end of this. If you do it my way with, with the risotto, it helps cut down on the, on the cooking time, if you saute the risotto like this. So if you notice, all the liquid is pretty much gone at this point. What we're going to do is add some more chicken stock. We've got our cipollinis here, our white wine here, our goat cheese ready for later. We're going to clean this area up because we are almost ready to plate these dishes. So what we're going to do is start with this heirloom tomato. Now, heirloom tomatoes were just made for me. I mean, they really were. Look at this. People might be saying, what is that green looking tomato? Well, it tastes the same, basically. It's good, I love it. Now, this tomato is going on the bottom of the plate. I'm gonna take this tomato and put it right in the juice. Because I want it to reach a temperature of the shrimp. I don't want it to really get all gooey and, and messy. And I'll just show you what I'm gonna do in a moment here. Okay, we get ourselves a plate. First dish, shrimp scampi. Shrimp scampi my way. This is looking good. Now, we're going to take our tomato and turn it over. We feel the temperature of tomato. Now it's gone up to the temperature of the rest of the dish. We 
take that, we're going to put it right in the center of the plate. Now we have a warm heirloom soft tomato, which is going to help cut. We have a lot of acidity now from the tomato. It's going to help us cut through the fat of the butter. We're going to take these lemons. Done. See the pits are still in there. We'll get the flavor of the lemons. All right. Even got a little flavor of the skin. All right. You use zest in baking. You could use zest in cooking. Same thing. Look at the pits. We don't have to waste no time. We'll cut it in half. Slow cook. All right. Now, take a little bit of this. You don't need much because look at the thick sauce in here. Look at that. See how nice and thick that is? We're just looking for a little added flavor. Take a little bit of these breadcrumbs, uh, nice and crispy, still warm, right over the top. Not too much because you don't want to you don't want to be eating bread scampi. You still want this to be shrimp scampi. We're going to turn that around. Naturally, it's going to get more thick. That's what you want. And you can measure it a little bit. Perfect. We got, see that butter gives it that nice shine. Jumping over here, we're adding our third liquid, chicken stock. So we're looking good. We're going to shut the shrimps off because they're finished. Risotto needs a couple of minutes. We're going to jump over here. I'm going to talk to you about that microgreen salad that we're going to do. I'm going to show you some right now. Pretty intense. Petite season mix. What does that mean? Well, we got a little bit of a red oak, tatsoy. We got a little bit of chervil. I see some parsley. I see some baby spinach. Look at the chervil. Beautiful. Okay, we're going right in there. Actually, we're not going to go right in there. We're going to make the dressing first. What we're going to do is a little mustard. Little dry oregano, fresh garlic, little oil, remember that lemon, lemon juice? Look at that. I want you to watch closely because you're not going to see any pits go in there. Look at the pits. They're right where they're at. I'm a big fan of all these kitchen gadgets and stuff like that, but if you know the basic techniques, you'll save yourself time and money. I have a friend of mine who cooks. He's got every gadget in the world. It takes us 10 hours to eat pasta because he's got this, he's got this strainer, he's got this, he's got this bowl, he's got, and, the, and the cleanup time is just absolutely horrendous. All right. Last of the liquid. That cooks out. This risotto is going to be ready to go. So we're coming back over here. Now, we got lemon juice, Dijon, garlic, oregano. This is our dressing. I like a thick dressing. Let's mix that up. We got a cold press olive oil here, first press. So it's going to be real strong through the nose, real nice flavor. Uh, you can go with a neutral oil for that matter, too, because the neutral oil will pick up you know, like a canola oil, it'll pick up the flavors. You don't necessarily need the prize olive oil that you're going to be spending so much money on. All right. Take a little bit of greens here. Micro ocean mix. Check this out. Got a little bit of, they call it seaweed hair. Put a little bit of that. You got to work quick with these micro greens. Once the acid hits the, um, hits the green, breaks it down quick. bit of this. And this is mustard Dijon. So yeah, you, you, you got it right. You taste a little bit of it. You're going to taste the flavor of the Dijon. That's why these microgreens are incredible. Uh, they're coming out with some serious, serious microgreens. Uh, they're, they're really matching and crossbreeding flavors and different types of, uh, of plants and, and herbs. So you're taking this, this mix and you're moving it around very gently. I'm not like this. You ever see, like, you go into the city, you get one of those salad places, and they make you salad to order? They're taking the tongs, and they're stabbing it, stabbing it. Stabbing. I'm like, you know, you want to eat gr greens that are crispy. You don't want to start smashing stuff all over the place. Now, you can't smell it unless you make this at home, but 
you get that Dijon smell, that garlic smell. Let's give it one more toss. See how I'm gently doing this? Okay. Now you got yourself another plate. Got your microgreens right there. Wow, nice. Make sure you get all this here. Now, if you wanted to take a vine ripe tomato that we just happen to have handy, we got some more heirlooms there too. Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Let's take the heirloom. Let's take an heirloom here. Really nice green looking heirloom tomato. And we're going to put it around the salad. Different flavor, different texture, different breed of tomato. And that's an accompaniment to our dish here, which is going to give us that, that earthy type of green texture that we're looking for. All right, climbing back over to the risotto. We're seconds from being away done. All right, now this risotto is going to get really thick, as you can see. Perfect. Now what we're going to do, we talked about adding that goat cheese in there, right? We're going to take a spoon of this goat cheese. Now when you think the goat cheese is completely absorbed in all the risotto, you take that risotto and you put it on top of this tomato. Now we're going to come back to our shrimps. We're going to mix them around. See how nice and thick this got? And that's, that's what I think scampi is. Scampi should be, you, you know, you have these incredible shrimps and putting them on top like that. They're still absorbing some of the breadcrumbs, the incredible flavor. Looking good. Maybe, maybe definitely put some of the sauce on top. And we got flavors here, folks, that everything works. Now, this is, uh, this is amaranth red. Don't ask me where they grow this, but I know that the colors are amazing. And we're going to put a little bit on top there. And then we're going to recap these dishes. We took the classic version of a shrimp scampi and we molded it into the nouveau kind of method, which is to take these breadcrumbs and toast them. Had you put the breadcrumbs in there not toasted, you would have gotten a soggy mess, like a lot of shrimp scampies that when you go out to eat these days, uh, they think that's shrimp scampi. It's not. The risotto is good because it creates the starch that you're looking for, which complements shrimp really well. And as well as these small microgreens that we got, which we did a salad, which you did a, a quick vinaigrette. And, and, you know, that's what dressing is these days. I mean, you don't need to always go to the store and buy a bottle of, of store-made, um, you know, dressing with, with Xander gum and, and everything else, thickening it up. You can make yourself a quick, you know, vinaigrette. And that's what I like to try to do on this show. Well, here you have it, our two dishes, the shrimp scampi and the microgreen salad. Thank you for watching this fun-filled episode of Taste This TV. I'm your host, Chef Joe Simonero. Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.